Just a couple of days ago, we talked about how the situation between the United States and Iran is getting incredibly, incredibly terrifying. And just days later, tensions have already escalated even further because today, Iran shot down a U.S. drone because they claim that this violated Iranian airspace. Now, predictably, the United States is uh, denying that it went into Iranian airspace, and they're maintaining that it was an international airspace. Now, regardless of who you believe or whether or not you think that they were justified in shooting down this drone, regardless of whether or not, you know, maybe they just temporarily entered Iranian airspace and then left it, I don't care. This should not be a reason for war, period. And I'm sorry, but I don't believe the United States. Is it plausible that they did in fact violate Iranian airspace? Absolutely. In fact, I'd say that it's likely, even if we don't necessarily have the evidence to determine that that was the case. It's their word against the Ron's word, but I do know that there are warmongers in Donald Trump's administration that are currently trying to do whatever they possibly can to goad us into war. And even if, let's say, the United States is telling the truth and they didn't cross into Iranian airspace, flying that close to Iran, I mean, what are you trying to do? You're trying to intimidate them. This is what we do all the time. We perform these military exercises just outside of North Korea's border because we're escalating, we're intimidating them. So this is what we do all the time. We try to give countries a reason to act aggressively so we have a justified reason to invade them. That's what we see again and again. So I really hope that people don't fall for it because we're seeing history repeat itself. And what we all are now worrying about is whether or not the United States government will use this as quote-unquote evidence that Iran attacked us and give them what they wanted in terms of taking action militarily. Now, the head of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, Hossein Salami, stated that Iran, quote, does not want war with any country, but we are completely and totally ready and prepared for war. So again, when you say things like this, you're just stoking the flames here. Everyone needs to calm down because war wouldn't benefit anyone. But, you know, unfortunately, we don't have people in positions of power around the world that are rational, right? We have Donald Trump, a gigantic man baby who's belligerent, who is making decisions on our behalf. And then in Iran, well, when Donald Trump pulled out of the Iran deal, what he did was he emboldened all of the right-wing extremists in Iran. The moderates were essentially delegitimized by Donald Trump's decision because, and Kyle Kalinske, to his credit, lays this out in a recent video. You know, they were saying, you don't want to work with the U.S. because they can't be trusted, and the moderates pushed for a deal. And then, unfortunately, Donald Trump proved them right by withdrawing from the JCPOA. So here's what happened. Donald Trump issued this tacit threat to Iran via Twitter. Quote, Iran made a very big mistake. Now, in an interview with press, he reiterated this same sentiment, except he said something else that was very chilling. How okay. will you respond, Mr. President? How will you respond? You'll find out. Are you willing to the war? You'll find out. You'll find out. I mean, obviously, 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 you know, we're not going to be talking too much about it. You're going to find out. They made a very big mistake. He was asked, are you willing to go to war with Iran? His answer was, you'll find out. And he later said they made a very big mistake. That sent chills down the back of my neck. And it's not like we can really take anything that Donald Trump says with, you know, anything more than a grain of salt, because this is an incoherent babbling buffoon. So, you know, you don't really want to focus on certain words too much, because oftentimes what he says is empty and meaningless. But with that being said, it's still really startling to see a U.S. president say you'll find out when it comes to war rather than just shooting down, you know, that prospect. Now, if you're wondering why he's sounding more and more hawkish and is moving away from his non-interventionist st stance here and not just unequivocally denouncing this idea that war with Iran is possible, well, it's because guess who's steering the ship? John Bolton. So as the Washington Post reports, administration officials interviewed by the Washington Post said that the national security advisor, John Bolton, has dominated Iran policy 
keeping a tight rein on information that gets to the president and sharply reducing meetings in which top officials gather in the White House's Situation Room to discuss the policy. On Monday, the Pentagon said it would send an additional 1,000 troops to the Middle East, another step to beef up the U.S. posture in the region. The reinforcements come as the administration's, quote, maximum pressure campaign, spearheaded by Bolton and Pompeo, undermines the Iranian economy. That campaign, initiated after Trump pulled out of the nuclear accord with Tehran, was recently expanded to include the designation of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps as a terrorist group and steps to starve Iran of oil revenues. Think about that. John Bolton is dominating Iran policy. I'm going to play the same clip that I've played on the show before. This is what he said in, I believe, 2016 or 2017, about Iran. And that's why before 2019, we here will celebrate in Tehran. Thank you very much. So him and Mike Pompeo, they're the ones that are goading Trump into war. And they know that Donald Trump instinctively may be against this idea that war with Iran is a necessary thing. But they also know that Donald Trump is incredibly stupid. So they're exploiting his stupidity to get what they want. Now, one senator, Angus King, actually made a really poignant point. And he said that what it seems like they're trying to do is box Trump in so he feels like he has no choice but to strike Iran because they know that he doesn't necessarily want to do that. But at the same time, if they make it seem as if he has to do that, then of course he's going to act because he's not bright enough to realize that he's being duped by these neocons. So this is a horrifying situation. Um, not something that I want to see. Um, but regardless, we'll keep watching this. I genuinely hope that we see a concerted effort by the Democratic Party, by libertarians in the Republican Party. Rand Paul, I hope everyone speaks out and denounces this at the top of their lungs because this is officially time to freak out. If we don't de-escalate, then war with Iran is possible. And if that were to happen, it would be absolutely devastating. As many people like Bernie Sanders say, it would make the war in Iraq look like a cakewalk. Don't want to see that happen. So we all need to, need to do our best to spread the word and get others, our peers, involved and aware that we may need to take to the streets, if not already, to protest war with Iran or even further escalation.